In this video, you'll discover the three keys that transform casual 3D art to stunning 3D art with very little effort. This applies to any 3D software and 2D software, but today I'm going to showcase these effects in Dash Studio and Photoshop. We'll be creating this very image you can see here, going from this to this. Hi there, I'm Vi Cameron from Gymlight. Having been teaching Dash Studio for the last 17 years, I found these three keys to have the highest impact with the least amount of effort. And that's why I've decided to do a quick video here and show you exactly how it works so you can see the transformation right before your very own eyes. All right, let's go. All right, so here we are inside Dash Studio. And the first key has to do with camera framing. A common mistake I see over and over is that people tend to kind of show everything in fear of losing anything or in fear of losing details. It's a cool set. We want to see it all and everything looks similar, right? More so, all the parts kind of look equally size-wise. It's like everything is just, you know, looking the same, right? And there is no clear direction where we want to go with our eyes. We're just wandering through this whole image at the same time and kind of feel a little bit lost in it. So the first thing you want to do is create so-called focal point. And the focal point is something that pulls us in the image so it becomes more clear and has less clutter in it. Now I'm going to switch mode and I'm going to do this all the time throughout this video. So I'm going to change the texture shaded, just add a quick uh, demo light so we can see what's going on. The first thing you want to do when you have a large set is to find a cool line that just, you know, initiates, starts somewhere in your image and pulls us towards the destination. And that line can be uh, a path that travels through the image. And uh, very often this, this line is best kept as a diagonal which means it originates somewhere in each of the corners of, uh, of the image, any of the corners, and pulls us towards the opposite corner. Uh, in this case, you know, this is a large set. It has a lot of, you know, openings, a lot of walls, a lot of paths, and everything kind of clashes and collides. It's very difficult to choose a specific path here, right? So what I'm gonna do is minimize the amount I'm seeing. So I'm gonna walk my camera all the way. And by the way, each set has multiple options or camera framing possibilities. I'm just showcasing one. So by placing the camera over here, we can now have a more clear path. See how it goes from the bottom here and moves up here. We suddenly have a lot less clutter going on in the scene, right? And what I also want to do is introduce you to a concept I call size variation. I do this a lot, and this can be done with props, people, characters, uh, vehicles, whatever you want. And that's to have something larger in the frame so that there is a, a kind of like a size variation, if you will, that will pull the viewer towards a specific area. I'm doing this really quickly here. As you can see now, I'm being now pulled from these larger items through a diagonal line up here. And a funny thing happens now. Let me just, let me just turn, off, uh, turn on the lighting. Uh, as you can see now, a funny thing happens is like all the lines in the image, the, the edge of the stones here, and this, the bridge here, uh, the railing up here, they all kind of pull and, and walk towards this area over here. So this area would be a perfect spot to have our character in, all right? So this is what I'm gonna do. And just before doing that, another thing you can do to further you know, enhance this play of uh, clarity and have a more clear image is to use the depth of field, right? And depth of field is the camera blur you can often see in renders, and if you have a real camera, you also recognize that. So I'm gonna just turn it on, and then just select here from the top view, and just go with uh, Texture Shaded Preview on this one, and 
just throw in my camera and set it roughly to here, which now further enhances the pull we are seeing, right? So that these large objects are also blurry and they pull us towards that area and all the uh, lines continue to pull us towards that area. I'm gonna just naturally copy my character to that location, just roughly in here, real quick. So I'm just gonna pull it down a bit and I'm just gonna rotate it now. Perfect. All right, so that covers the camera portion. The first key is about the camera, how you frame. And you can do a lot with the camera to help and create that focal point with your angles, with your depth of field, with size variation, height, and all that. But really, the next key further enhances what we are trying to achieve here, and that's lighting. You see, right now, we are pretty much lighting everything in like we did in the, in the beginning, right? Although this is slightly better because we have a natural flow, we have a focal point, we are not yet enhancing it the way we should. And the way this is enhanced most easily is via lighting. Roughly rotate the light around and try to go for a more dramatic, you know, type of lighting. So that would be like the light coming from the side or from behind that naturally creates a little more contrast and moves away from everything being lit equally. But there is a, a way, a specific thing I want to show you that will really help you when, when lighting your scenes to further dramatically enhance how lighting falls and such. So here I'm using a very sharp and narrow lighting from behind that really is very, very dramatic the way it falls. But still, there is, you know, very often when you have light coming like this from behind, uh, what you can do is increase its intensity. I'm going to increase overall intensity here, and that will also increase the sunshine. The thing is, when you have lighting coming at a steeper angle, you can often, you know, uh, increase the intensity, right? Now, here's the thing. We are still getting lighting everywhere. We have it kind of more narrow right now because we have added side and back lighting, which is very dramatic. It suddenly starts to alternate between brightness and darkness, which is great, but we want to move away from the light entering the entire scene. All right, so right now I'm just using the kind of the environmental lighting, which is built into Dash Studio. This is the iRay render engine, by the way. We're still getting lighting everywhere, right? So the simplest thing you can do is add a box primitive, like a cube primitive to your scene, and we're going to place that box in such a way so it blocks the sun partially, all right? So let me show you how that will work. I can just go for top view here real quick, and uh, I'm going to just move that slightly out of its current position and place it somewhere around there. And I'm also now going to move it up, let's say maybe 4,000 something like that and that then will naturally block some of the light and as you can see now the light is being blocked off the scene albeit a little bit too much right now but you can change the cubes position you can change the cubes height and that will affect how the scene looks like let's go the other way let's go up all right so perfect now we are cutting off the sunshine from entering the entire scene to only entering the focal point area, right? So we are continuing on the same path, we're doing the same thing as we did in key number one, which is to declutter the scene, to have less stuff going on, right? And right now, we are continuing that path and we are declutterizing the image yet again by having more light where the focal point is and less light everywhere else. All right, so here I just loaded the scene I've pre-made previously so that you can just have the exact same look and feel. But basically, this is what I did. I added the box that blocks off the light and kind of fades it into the scene here. So it kind of culminates up here. So another thing you can do just before leaving lighting is to add a frontal filler. Right now we have a very strong kind of backlight effect on the girl, but she's not receiving so much frontal lighting. And we can just add an additional spotlight from the front 
to uh, do that. And that's simply done like that. Add a spotlight. I want to switch view to texture shading so I see what's going on. I'm going to turn on my working light just to roughly see the scene. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my new spotlight and just go and place it right from the front, which is just behind the camera. So it's not an advanced light, it's just that we want it to be behind the camera, a little bit higher up to get a little bit more definition and shadows. So it's not just flat. And then just aim it straight down. And I'm gonna focus it a little bit. So the light over here, I'm gonna just go ahead here and just select a little bit larger size so that we get the softer light. And then just narrow it down a little bit. And that's pretty much it. That's all I do. Now I'm gonna turn the light off and turn on my final spotlight, which is just the same light. You can look through it here. Spotlight is the same light, it's just, it's pre-made. So it has the same look and feel like the image you saw earlier, right? And that now combined will look exactly like the image you saw earlier, but there's one more step to cover, which I'm gonna cover in a second. So as you can see, the additional light adds some extra frontal filler to our girls. Which that's, she doesn't look that, you know, completely pitch dark. Like if I were to turn it off, she would look a little bit darker and we don't want that. We want to enhance it from the front with a filler. This is by, by the way, how professional photographers tackle lighting. They have a strong backlight or side light and then they pair that with a frontal weaker filler. So by all means, you don't want that frontal filler to be super, super, super intense. Just a tad will do. All right, so I'm gonna leave that studio now. I'm gonna enter key number three, uh, which is gonna be made inside Photoshop. So I'll see you in a sec. All right, perfect. So here's our render inside Photoshop. And I'm not gonna do a whole lot of things here, but I'm gonna keep the same track. That means we're gonna minimize the clutter and increase clarity. The first thing I'm gonna do is to brighten the image. Very often 3D renders tend to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna duplicate the layer and add a screen effect. And usually I don't want that to go everywhere and also not at full intensity. So I'm gonna just maybe select a little bit of that and then also add a mask and use black and white color, use gradient and just simply fade it away. So it starts maybe somewhere around here and is at max where the girl is standing. So that way I can enhance the lighting where she stands and keep it a little bit darker right here. I'm gonna keep it down a little bit so it's not that much. All right, next what I wanna do is I wanna enhance her presence further by creating a little bit of God rays, if you will. You know, these can be done inside that studio, but I usually find it's a lot quicker to just quickly fake them inside Photoshop. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just add a small, whoops, small effect here. It doesn't need to be exact and you can work with multiple rays or path so uh, path so to speak uh, i'm just gonna keep it really simple just do one you can have multiple if you want and i'm gonna fill that with white so white color and fill next what i want to do is kind of add the you know, blurry edges because it looks kind of clunky as of now right so i'm gonna create a new mask Oops, just before doing that, I want to blur it first. Uh, delete. Let's blur it. Just soften with maybe 10. You don't want to soften too much because you want to still kind of feel the ray path. But going in the other direction, too little, might be a little bit too sharp, right? So next what I'm going to do is add a bit of variation to this. So now I'm going to create that mask down here. And I wanna create now and fill it with a cloud pattern that adds variation to this. Now I'm gonna right click up here and choose apply layer mask. I'll create another mask and use gradient and just simply fade it here so it doesn't go full force all the way. It just maybe hits the car and then simply fades away slightly, right? something like that. Next, I don't want this to go full force all the way because, you know, it just looks overlaid. 
right? And this is true to most effects you want to do. You want to keep them down a little bit. So I'm just going to go for the, the main layer here. Just add a very subtle amount. And you can use screen if you want. Just so we can see, feel it, like so. But it's not taking over the render. It's like, okay, we can kind of feel the ray kind of going down there, right? But it's very, very subtle. You want to flatten the image and then let's go and add a filter. I always add some kind of filter. And one of my favorites is, of course, Nick Collection. If you have that, but there is a gazillion of filters. And one of my favorites is Portrait and Pastel. That easy. I'm just going to choose one of the presets. Let's choose, um, yeah, I think we want to choose number two. And then just click on OK. And that usually adds the filter at maximum quality. So what I'm going to do is kind of step down the intensity a little bit so it doesn't overtake the image. Again, I don't want to, you know, add too much so it looks photoshopped. I just want to add a little bit so it, you know, enhances the image and then I'm fine with that. Finally, what I want to do is flatten the image and then head over to Camera Raw. Camera Raw is awesome. It's, I spend a lot of time in Camera Raw because it's so easy to just, you know, adjust your images here and add effects. And of course, one of the things you can do is just change the color of your render if you want to, right? I'm gonna keep it a little bit blue toned uh, the way it is. But what I usually do in here is add vignetting. A little bit darker edges that surround the image. That will help to, again, what we are doing is all the three keys, as you have seen, have basically the same role. We want to minimize clutter, increase clarity, enhance the focal point and tone down, minimize the lighting on the edges and enhance the lighting right here. And that's the path you want to see towards the girl. Now, I can save this right now so we can see uh, the difference. So let me just quickly save that. And I'm going to throw in the main render here again. So you can see this is without the Photoshop effect and this is with the Photoshop effect. As you can see, it's quite subtle. It's not like we are dramatically changing the image, but it looks a lot better. It has more flow towards the focal point and it also enhances her with the additional rays or God rays from the heaven. Now, that's pretty much it. So as you can see from the initial image we created here when we just started a few moments ago to this, it's quite an impact. And to be honest, we didn't spend that much time either, right? I mean, we changed the camera so it has more alignment. It has a path, a clear path where the lines contribute to the focal point. It has a diagonal effect. It's kind of skewed. It's a little bit more like it's not from the front, right? It's not direct towards the path. It's a bit from the side. So it creates that diagonal effect. And then we added depth of field. We added size variation. You have larger rocks here and, er and, and areas that contribute to the smaller area right here. Then we pair that with lighting from the side and behind. We kept the light from entering the scene by adding the box behind. We added a frontal light. We then head uh, straight into Photoshop and we added a little bit of God rays, a little bit of filter and tone the edges. So this doesn't take a lot of time. It's kind of quick. Of course, it might take longer to master fully, but these are not difficult changes to do. And that's pretty much it, guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit like and share it with your friends. And I hope to see you soon again.